Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements Change Background video, we'll be giving this portrait here this Neon City background. Now, we'll be making this out of a few pictures. There's a picture of the girl right there. There is, in behind here, one city picture, and here is another city picture. We'll be combining all of that to give us that dramatic other shot. Let's bring that up again here. There we go. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button and always share with your friends. Just click on the share button as well. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you really want to learn how to use the Photoshop Elements program, not just a few tools I'll be using here in this video, but all the different tools, all the different menus, everything, take a look at my complete training course. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. To start this project, I'll close down this finished file. There we are. And then I have these three files in the background. Now, there's a link to download these. You'll find it in the description. It says Project Files. Click on that, and then you can download these three files down your computer to work along with this project. Let's start off with a brand new file. Go up to the File menu, come over here to New, and then Blank File. I'll leave this at the Photoshop Elements default setting right there. 6 inches wide, 4 inches tall by 300 pixels per inch. Choose OK. There we go. Now, I'm working with these floating windows, which makes this project very easy to start. And if you don't have your floating windows enabled, let me show you how to do that. Just go up here to the Edit menu, come down to Preferences right there, and click General. And then in here, make sure these two checkboxes are checked. Allow Floating Documents and Enable Floating Document Window Docking right there. Make sure that those two are checked. Choose OK. Now you can take a window and you can dock it like that and it's docked in behind here or you can pull it down and float the window. This makes it very easy to bring images from one file into this other file. Let me show you how that's done. I'll put this one right up here. There it is. And let's just pull this down a little ways and we'll pull her down a little ways. We'll go to this file here. Simply take your image, take the background layer, and drag it over and drop it onto this one. It's that easy to do when you have these as floating windows. So we'll do that for all three of these pictures. There's the first one. Here's our second picture. Let's drop that in. Close that down. Here's our third picture. Just drop that in. And now everything is inside this one project file. At this point, you can then dock this back up here. Again, we're done with the docking part of that, or the floating windows part of that. We can close that down. Let's close down our background image in here. And then we have this middle layer here. I'm going to call this one City 1. And let's rename this one. Just double click where it says Layer. Call that City 2. And of course, the top one up here is the portrait. There we go. So we're working on the City 1 layer. Now I want to make this a bit bigger. I want it to fit inside of this widthwise. So I'll pull it down a little ways. Use the Control T keyboard shortcut, which brings up the control handles in here. I can now just grab that control handle and pull it over till it's a bit larger on the left hand side and right hand side. There we go, so it's just a bit larger. And then let's position this so that this top of this cab down here is just off the screen. There we go. Now the figure will come in here and she'll cover up the, this middle part of the street so we don't need to worry about the people in there. But that's the right positioning that I want is right about there. And then click the green check mark. Now if you look at this, it looks real nice, but it's you know it's dark over here, it's kind of dark over here. We'll fix all that. And there's nothing up here in the sky area. It's all just really black. It's kind of dull in there. So we'll fix that by showing our other picture in behind, the City 2 picture. So there's the City 1 and there's our City 2. We'll actually use this piece in here to fill in that gap up there. Now for this, make sure you're on the City 1 layer. Grab the Magic Wand tool. There it is. I have my tolerance set at 30. That's the default setting. Make sure you have it set here where it says Contiguous. That's important right there. That means that everything is touching. So if I click in here someplace, it will only find coloration that matches that particular spot and is touching from that spot. It's going to give us a lot of excess stuff. We'll clean that up in just a second. So let's click into here. And that selects all of the blacks in here on this. Now, I only want this middle part right there. And I want to get rid of all the stuff over here and all the stuff over here. We'll use 
the polygonal lasso tool to do that and just modify our selections. Go over to that tool. It's right here. Polygonal lasso tool. And make sure it says subtract. I have my feathering set at one pixel down here. And what you want to do is you want to come in and then just make a selection. If I want to have this dark bit in there, that's fine. I want to have some of this stuff in here. But right up here and then down through here, let's just take our clean that part out. So I'll click up here outside, click and then pull straight down. You can see there's that that little line in there. There it is. Just come down and click. Now it's kind of a lamp thing here. I'm going to click around that lamp thing like that. And then let's just take it down and just inside of that other selection and come right down the middle, around to the left, and outside and back to the beginning. And that removes that bit from the selection. Do the same thing on the right hand side. Now this has these lines coming in this way, kind of diagonal lines. We're going to be mimicking those diagonal lines. I'm going to start up here and I'll come down a bit and then let's do a diagonal in here and then over a little bit and then a diagonal down. Kind of following this stuff right there just a little ways and let's bring it down straight down like that and then over a little bit and then a diagonal right there and then we can go around. reason for those diagonals is in case we're seeing anything on that side it will then match that up with the diagonal. So it'll look like it's actually part of a building or something, you know, right in here specifically, up in here. So the cutout will blend in better. Now all these little bits in here, this is going to be showing stuff from the original picture on top of the other picture, which will again help to blend the two together. Now at this point, this is selected. We want to invert that selection. Go up to Select, come down to Inverse. So now the outside part is selected, and I did that so that we can then click on the layer mask button up here, which will just show us just that stuff. So there it is, just that bit. And that gives us the other buildings in behind filling in that whole section. Now it's a little bit weird, as you can see in here, a few spots. This picture is down too low. Let's come down to this layer. We can then move this up, move it around a bit until it looks nice. I'm going to pull some of this stuff in here. Let me put that back where it belongs. There's a little bit of something right up in here that I don't like. If we show and hide this, you can see there's kind of a bit of dirt right in there. We can fix that on the layer mask side. Black hides, white shows. So I want to hide this little bit of stuff right here. It's black. Let me just reverse the colors in here. I want to paint with black in the foreground. Grab the paint tool. My brush is too large. Let's bring the brush size down quite a ways. And I'll put it right about 50 or so. That should be pretty good. See, there's the brush size. And then just paint right over this with that brush tool. It just cleans out that little bit of stuff right there. Okay, now we need to match the values in this background stuff to our foreground stuff. We'll do that with a an adjustment layer on the background in here because we're adjusting the background to the foreground, City 2 to City 1. Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer and click on Levels. And where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, make sure that that is checked and choose OK. There we go. If you look at the histogram over here, where it's peaking on the left hand side, those are your darks in the picture, and the right side are your lights. They're peaking right over here. What you want to do is you want to bring in the left control so it comes into that dark area like that, and bring the right side so it comes into the right area. Now you can look at the values in here. I'm going to pull these in until they look like they're a really good match to our foreground values. And I'm thinking right around 60 is pretty good. Maybe a little a little less than that. Get some atmospheric distortion happening in there. It's just a little less on that. And that's pretty good. And the right side comes in just a bit. Kind of lightens things up. And that's pretty good as well. So there it's now matching well with our foreground colors. You can adjust the midpoint here if you want to bring a little more light in there. This adjust your mid values. And somewhere in here is pretty good. Doesn't need to be exact because we'll be colorizing all this and the colorizing will hide anything that's just a bit off. There we go. Now, right in here, there's a taxi in this picture. So we need to make this background picture larger so we're no longer seeing that taxi. So let's go to that layer. That's our City 2 layer. 
using control T keyboard shortcut brings up the control handles in here and I'm going to pull the bottom left down just until that taxi goes away and that's kind of about there we can then adjust the picture in here so we're getting a nice bit of city moving back that matches the perspective and that's pretty good there anything left down here will be covered up by the girls image that'll be all right we just want to really fill the background here up with a lot of this neon stuff happening we want to have even more just pull up a bit further again her picture will be in here so this will be able to cover up anything that's looking kind of funny in that middle zone but i think right around in here looks pretty good i'm looking at the sign right here and i'm positioning that sign so it looks as if it's actually in the picture properly and i think that is filling it in pretty nice it's a judgment call on this but i think that looks pretty good okay choose okay so that's all done that's ready to go we now need to take all of this stuff here and merge this onto a new layer we'll be applying some effects onto this merged and i want to make that nice and clean so I'll click on your top layer here make sure that the girl is hidden background doesn't matter but all three of these city layers are showing and use a special keyboard shortcut it's the shift control alt and the e key and what that does is it takes all these three layers all the visible layers and merges those up onto a new layer now if i hide all of this stuff you'll see that we're left with that merged picture right there now we can apply an effect onto this whole merged picture and it'll apply nice and evenly and we'll be doing a color gradient in here go up here to the layer menu and come down to new fill layer and gradient where it says use previous layer make sure that is checked and choose okay that applies to just that one layer that we just made that's all fine where it says gradient click or the actual gradient right there click on that and that brings up this gradient in here we can then change the actual gradient down here the bottom two spots are these are your color stops click on one you can then change your color right here and we'll set our first one at a magenta and that's right down here it's the little number sign is you want f f zero zero f f that's a pure magenta on the right hand side click on that one again click on the color spot here for this one we want zero zero and then four f's one two three four and that's your pure cyan choose okay now notice how it kind of fades out on the right hand side that's controlled by this top square here this is your opacity stop click on that and there's your opacity just change that to 100 and then choose okay we now want it going left to right instead of up and down here's our up and down angle right here make sure to set it linear you can just grab this and pull it over here to the right hand side and when it goes to zero it's giving us this left to right gradient right there so the angle is set at zero magenta left side cyan right side in the middle just does what the middle wants to do and that's just fine choose okay there's our gradient now go up here to the blend modes and come down to overlay and that overlays this onto that cityscape in there so it puts those colors into the cityscape we're now going to adjust the values of this whole picture in here to make it a bit brighter come down here where it says layer one that's our combined city layer and we'll put a new adjustment layer in here so layer new adjustment layer and levels again make sure that is checked it should be at this point choose okay we can now darken the darks by bringing the left hand side in let's bring it up just a little ways maybe about 18 or 19 in here the right hand side is fine the whites look nice we want to lighten the whole thing up so if you pull this middle control in here over towards the left hand side it brightens everything up all the midtones get lighter in there because it's much more of that kind of fancy fantasy neon lit effect on that and bring quite a ways up maybe up to about 270 or so there's 271 so it's real bright and almost cartoonish looking in here with the brightness of those colors so there we go the nice thing about using the adjustment layers in here is you can always go back and change the colors up here and you can go back and you can change the values on this background image by double clicking on that brings back up the levels you can then readjust if you want to so you have freedom to go back in and 
modify if you want to modify in the future. Okay, let's now bring the girl in. Only two basic things to do with her. We'll be doing a layer mask first. I'm going to make her to the top so you have a bit of space for the layer mask. And we'll be masking her out and the hair and then allowing the colors to bleed through on the outside. So to start that, let's grab a selection tool. I'll just use the polygonal lasso tool again. I'll start over here someplace and then just click around her hair. Don't go on top of the hair itself. Just click just outside. And once we have our selection, we'll use the refine edge tool to clean that up. And again, just, just outside. And then we'll clear out to the bottom and around and then up on the right hand side of the picture in here. Now when you're using this tool, don't click too quickly or it will collapse your selection. You'll have to start over again. So go ahead and take your time on this. And then we switch over to that refined edge tool in just a second here. There we go. Okay. Select refine edge. Now I always use mine with the set at overlay. That gives you that red coloration. This makes it real easy to see. The default brush size is 35 and maybe I'll go a little bit larger. I'll go up to 50. I'll just type that in. That's right down here in the options. That looks pretty good. Let's set this for a smart radius. I'll leave everything else at their default settings. It's not as critical on this one actually. But if you need to, you can come in and kind of play with these a little bit and get it real nice and clean. But I found that the Photoshop Elements Refine Edge does a great job. It's actually, in my opinion, better than the one over in Adobe Photoshop. That one seems to have some problems. I'm always having to fix that afterwards. Not so much here with the Photoshop Elements version of the same tool. Not sure why that is. But there you go. So this you just paint right over that overlap in there, the foreground to background. And then Photoshop Elements goes in and cleans that edge up and finds all those bits. And it does a great job at this. Now we're going on to a nice busy background, which actually makes this easier. The busier the background, the less work you have to do to make this absolutely perfect. Everything is kind of lost in the busyness. If I had a solid background, then I had to take a lot more time with this and be a lot more careful. But the busy background, pretty straightforward and easy. Okay, that looks really nice, actually. Let's just zoom in and make sure we didn't miss anything in here. Remember, zoom tool right there. Zoom in a couple of clicks. And let's take a look through the edge, maybe a little bit right there, back to the paintbrush. That's about the best that's going to do. That'll be okay. You can use the wheel on your mouse to scroll up and down. You see right down here, it's a little bit of the background showing right there, but that red peeking through. We can fix that with this tool, which is the erase tool. It erases this effect, or fine edge effect, and takes it back to the original. You don't have to go clear to the edge on this because we're having some spill color anyway, which we'll be putting in. Now to move the image, hold the space bar down. We can just pull the whole image over and I'll just do a little cleanup right there and scroll up with a scroll wheel. And that looks fine. Okay. The output to a new layer with layer mask. Choose OK. And there it is. We're now seeing that fancy layer in behind this layer. Let's just bring this back in, go to the zoom tool, fit on screen, and there she is fitting into that nice background. It's looking a little bit dark back there once this is done, so you may want to adjust the values of the city once this is finished. But first, let's bring those colorations in here into the edge of her figure around there, and we'll do that pretty easily. We can do another one of these layers in here, on top of her layer, one of these gradient layers. So that's layer, new fill layer, gradient, where it says use previous layer. Make sure that, that is checked. Choose OK. And we'll just repeat the same settings again. So this is going to be zero right here. Click on the gradient and let's put our same settings back in again. The left hand side was FF, then 00, zero then FF. That's our magenta right hand side over here and the color of this one was the 00 and then four F's FF FF that's your cyan 
click on your top transparency opacity stop right here and set the opacity at 100 and choose OK. Now it's looking kind of weird right now. That's because it's, it's going into this layer mask right there. And that's correct because we need to do our blend mode still. So choose OK. Up here where it says normal, change this to overlay. That overlays those colors into her image. Now you may like it like this, but I'll put this so that we have her normal colors in the middle section and that's on the layer mask up there. Let's make it real nice and clean. Come down to her layer mask. Look for that light blue outline. Hold the Alt key down and drag it up like that. Choose Yes. That just copies that layer mask straight up. Now at this point, we can come in and then paint into the middle of this with black and bring back her original colors. Let's go to our paintbrush. Make sure that black is your foreground color. Let's bring the size of our brush up quite a ways, about 250, I think, would be pretty good on this. Let me just type that in. Always faster. Just real big, soft brush. And let's make sure I'm on the correct layer mask. Undo that. Go to this layer mask. There we are, that's what you want. And then paint right in there. And that brings back her original colors. Don't go clear to the edge of the hair. Just kind of come in here, painting into the middle area, but leaving a lot of that coloration on the outside. Just in there. There we go. Okay, looks really good. Now, last little bit in here. We can bring her values up a bit. And a couple of things for the background. We'll look at that in just a second. So let's come back down to her image here. Make sure on the left-hand side, and we'll do an adjustment layer here, a levels layer. So layer new adjustment layer and levels. Again, look for that check mark right there. Choose OK. You can now grab the middle control here and lighten her up a little bit and bring the darks down a bit. This is bringing her midtone values up and then we're bringing the blacks back in again by darkening down the left hand side. So just a little adjustment, a little tweak in here on her values. Maybe a little more on the light side to bring her contrast up a little bit. That looks pretty good right there. Just bringing the two sides in a bit to increase the contrast and lightening up the midtones a little bit. Okay, now we can look at the final bit for our background values. Now, if you want to, you can go up here to this layer. See those three dots over there? That's where the name is. If you right click on those three dots, you can release the clipping mask. And what that does is it allows this to cover everything, not just her image. Sometimes that gives you a little bit of a help, sometimes not so much, and it looks like we're okay here. So let's come down to our layers right here, our level adjustment. This is for the city, of course. Double click on that. And now we can play around with these settings in here to get the city just the way you want. And I think I'll pull my, my lights up a little bit here. They seem to be a bit dark. So real kind of a, a garish background. So let's bring those lights up and play with the mid-tones a little bit. And maybe back off on the darks just a bit in there. And that's looking pretty good. So there we go. That is doing this kind of fantasy neon effect background on our portrait and allowing those colors to bleed into our foreground image up here, which makes it look as if she's actually being lit by the colorations in behind. Now, don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you click that like button and, of course, also click on share and share through social media. Don't forget to subscribe. I've also added in Patreon. You'll find a little button for Patreon on my channel page, my main channel page, and those little links up the right hand corner. And to learn everything about Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training courses. They're available both on Amazon and my own website, How to Gurus. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.